Hello YouTube, welcome to the natural Q&A number two. Before I start with the questions, a little announcement. I realized that the frequency of the Q&As for the hypertrophy portion would be too small. So I'm going to up it to actually once a month as well, I think. So you can expect a natural Q&A every month and an hypertrophy Q&A every month. I might do the same for the injury prevention Q&A because you guys really pulled through and posted a ton of questions all of which are really good. So for now, I'm going to up the frequency of them. I'm not going to tell you exactly when they're gonna come, but you can expect them more often. We'll see about nutrition. In nutrition, I don't get as many questions, so it might stay every three months. I might up the injury prevention Q&A every two months. But all in all, I want to answer this question so that when we get many more people on the channel, I'm not going to be completely swamped because I will not answer the same question twice. So I can just redirect people to the Q and A that were already published. But let's start today with the questions that were asked a while ago in the first video. Pride asks, there are many new subscribers lately and it would be nice if you could introduce yourself, what you like, what you hate, your dreams and hopes, your hobbies or something like that. Plus work, education, where you're from, what your main goals of the channel, blah, blah, blah. So in order, what I like, what I hate. I like to work. Um, it personally makes me very happy. I like to read. I read a lot. Um, physical activity is, is a staple in my life. I used to do much more cardio intensive activities like swimming, running, all of that stuff. Now I'm focused on lifting only. So that's all I do. I like spending time with the people I love, which there are not many of them, but the few that I have, I take good care of. Um, I like animals. I have a, I have a cat who is a very playful cat. And after that, my life is pretty well regimented and I don't really have time to, you know, do nothing. So I also like to take it easy sometimes. I like to take the sun. Sun bathing is actually quite relaxing for me. The issue is that I live in a place where winter lasts eight months. And when I tell you that there's no sun for eight months, there is no sun. So, you know, I, in summer, I enjoy myself out there. But for the most part in winter, I'm mostly walking, training, and then relaxing and going to bed. What I hate, there are not many things that I hate. Uh, I try my best to not be negative and not spread negativity. There's already enough of it in this world. I don't hate people. I don't have that in my heart to hate people. Uh, usually I will find people annoying a lot, uh, but usually it's because of certain personality traits, things that I find grating or that I personally find can be damaging for them. And since you can't really help people and change people if they don't want your help, I get that annoyance uh, in me a lot. But as far as things, concepts that I hate, I hate liars, I hate hypocrites, and that already makes me hate 90% of people because most people are that. Uh, and I, I get that for some most of the time it's to keep the peace, right? People are hypocrites because it's easier. I personally don't like that. I'm much more comfortable with people who tell the truth. Uh, I also have a problem with people who are, who take themselves too seriously. To me, uh, having an ego is important for your own sake and for your confidence and f just, you know, being able to love yourself, which is extremely important. But if it devolves into not even being able to make fun of, of yourself, I don't see the point. Uh, because it's no fun also in my opinion. So that's mostly what I hate. Uh, there are, if you, if you really poke me on this, there's, there's like details or things that I hate that are super specific. Like for example, people who try to talk to you through the bathroom door that I hate, but it's, you know, it's stupid stuff. It's annoyance. It's not really important. My dreams, I have many dreams. Um, right now I want to own a large portion of land and uh, build something on it. It's not fully accomplished yet. I have some savings to, you know, put in place, etc. Uh, of course, bodybuilding is also part of my dream, but it's a little bit different. I, there's another question coming later where I'll be able to explain more. It's not conventional bodybuilding I care about. I want to push the limits of my body and I want to see how far they go. So that's sort of one of my dreams. And as far as dreams go, I like to teach people and I envision a world where, you know, it becomes the norm, where we teach people, we help each other get better. 
So you can also count that in as well. Hobbies, I sort of detailed that, but I don't have many hobbies, but the few I have, I spend a lot of time doing. So it's training, reading, now making those videos as well, even though it doesn't take that long. But we'll see, maybe this YouTube channel will become a bigger part of my life eventually. Work education. So work, I'm going to be straight up. Uh, I had a pretty stellar academic performance all throughout my years. Elementary school, middle school, high school, I was always pretty much top of my class. Uh, in high school, I actually entered a very elite uh, establishment where for the first time I wasn't the best. It was interesting. It was the, one of the greatest uh, academical experiment, experience I ever had in my life. After that, I started, I messed up. It's a long story. I might tell it one day, but I ended up in a college that was much, much lower than my actual level. And I be, it was too easy. So I became bored with it. And uh, eventually I found a way to leave the country and go into a much better college in the US, which I did. But the degree I pursued at first was a double degree. So it was a double bachelor's in communication and literature, modern literature. And then, and I know that someone asked that too, I got my master's in the US. Now, the master's was in uh, literature as well. I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly in what, because the, uh, the program I was in is quite rare. And if I told you, you would be able to put the pieces together and potentially find where I live and who I am. So I don't want to do that. But just so you know, it was a specific application of literature and linguistics. And as far as work goes, I, as I said, I work in uh, artificial intelligence. And I, I was born in France originally and I moved to the US. And my main goals with the channel is building a community, meaning I want a group of people who are passionate with natural lifting, who want to keep pushing the limits and who want to share and help each other. That's my main goal of the channel. So it's educational for the most part. I'm going to start doing some uh, more entertaining videos at some point, but vlogs, for example, you're asking me if I would do vlogs. I don't like vlogs. I don't get vlogs. I don't see what's the point of watching someone do something for 10 minutes. Like you're watching someone do nothing interesting for 10 minutes. How is that fun? For the most part, these videos are not even edited or anything. It's just someone filming themselves. I don't like it because it's, to me, it's, it's like people are living vicariously through the person they watch. I don't think it's healthy. I don't want to promote that on my channel. I also think it's lazy content. Morris asks, what, what gives you the drive and determination to train? For me, I don't really have that. It's discipline. I don't really ask myself if I want to train. I just train. It's part of the schedule. It's just, it's go time. It's 5 p.m. It's time to train until 8 p.m. That's it. As far as motivation, of course, sometimes I like to you know, I had that little fire going. So for me, music, music pumps the, pump, pumps the adrenaline pretty nice. And after that, it's just anime and manga because that's what got me, you know, lifting in the first place. It's uh, seeing those characters like so muscular and strong and I wanted to be like them. What mistakes have you made in your life that you hope to never happen again? For me, the number one would be falling out of love with things which happen to me quite often actually. And it's the worst feeling in the world. And it's always, it was always my fault. It was something I did. And now I've learned my lesson and I have things in my life that I love, love deeply and I don't want to fall out of love with them. So that's one thing that I, I will make sure never happens again. TG asks, does getting more muscular actually help with girls? Yes. Getting more muscular helps with girls. It helps with guys. It helps because it makes you more attractive. And it makes you more attractive on two planes. It makes you more physically attractive because and a lot of people don't like to hear that. You'll have a lot of people say, oh, the physique doesn't matter. Or they'll say, oh, you can be chubby and be attractive. Yeah, you can, but you would be more attractive if you were sculpted and muscular. And for the most part, it's just a biological marker. People who are lean are usually healthier. And it's funny too, because science has proven that it's not technically true, but we just associate that with health. That's why on the cover of health magazines, you'll see a guy with a six pack. You can have a six pack and not be healthy. You can be on a ton of drugs, but we associate that to that. And also if you want to dive deeper into that, a muscular physique is going to also show that you are competent, that you're able to work hard, which are traits that are very attractive in a partner because no one wants to date a slouch. 
people want to date someone who pulls their weight and is active. And as far as, because you are, you're asking for girls, right? Girls outside of any cultural standard are going to be attracted by certain male attributes due to just evolution. And some of these male attributes are going to be correlated with high testosterone. And that's what muscularity is. Muscularity makes you look high T and it's very attractive for women. And you might have heard girls say, oh, I don't like, uh, I don't like guys with muscles. For the most part, these are girls who try to not to, uh, they try to not be like the other girls. And since they know that everyone likes muscles, everyone likes the, the, the ripped dude, they go, you know, uh, against the grain, but if they had the chance, they would date a guy who has muscles over a guy who doesn't. So if you want to get more attractive, you need to lift. It's something that I personally had to do. And I think that many young men can resonate with that. And on the other side, and I think that's going to be the most important part, lifting is going to make you much more confident. One, you're going to actually love the body you live in. It's going to improve your hormonal profile. It's going to make you more, you know, straightforward, more not necessarily aggressive, but alpha in a sense, because you'll be more, uh, you'll be more high test and it's going to make you feel much better about yourself. Your posture is going to improve. And all of that is going to be a show of confidence and people love confidence, men, women. That's what we're attracted towards because it's reliable. And you'll find also that the opposite is true. People who are needy and who are not confident in themselves, it's repellent, especially for women. Women can smell that. If you're needy and if you're desperate, game over. You will always get bashed. You will always get rejected. It's the worst thing you can do. So if lifting helps you stop being so desperate, then do it. But understand that just because you get big doesn't mean that you'll get the girl. It's just a boost. You also need the personality to match. So as you develop your muscularity, you have to develop your spiritually as well. Zoku Fitness, if you could train with a, any anime character, who would you train with? I personally like to train alone. I don't like to train with people. And it's funny because the few characters I can think of I would like to train with, they're like this too, where they wouldn't want to train with me because they train alone. So like Baki, uh, Guts from Berserk, Zoro from One Piece. When you see them train, they train by themselves, usually in like secluded locations. So if I had to pick, I would, it would be one of these three, but it wouldn't really work. We would just train, you know, next to each other. Uh, someone would be fun to train with. I would say either Shin from Aishield 21 or Yamato. Maybe Yamato because Shin is sort of like the other three. He just trains by himself. Yamato is the type of guy who would like try to kill you in the gym. For people who haven't watched Aishield 21, I can say with confidence, it's top three greatest sport mangas of all time. IQ, IQ and Ajime no Ippo might be above it, but it's, it, it doesn't get lower than top three. So go read it. I will eventually make videos about it. Mike, are you still 210? Do you have any new findings about recomps? How much volume do you do per body part? Yes, I'm still 210. I wonder why people ask. Maybe because I look much leaner, so people think I lost weight. I didn't lose any weight, I lost fat. And it was actually a slow process if you look at all of the videos and I lost fat in my core because that's where I lose the fat first. Now I have to get to my back, I have to get to my legs and that's going to be much longer. So you can expect me to be at 210 for a long time. Uh, and as far as the, the method, my methods I described in the, the guide, they didn't change. Uh, the findings is, it's amazing. I've balked for a long time, balking was fun, but nothing beats the recomp, it's amazing. And as far as volume per body part, it, it changes. It's just depending, like, for example, I barely do any volume for my quads. I don't do much volume for my biceps either. Why? They're already big and I'm not trying to get them bigger. I would say the body part that gets the most volume like right now is my upper back. It's insane how much volume I do for it. I do things every day for the upper back. But yeah, that type of question where people ask, oh, how much set per body part? It doesn't work like that. It's from individual to individual. For me, for example, if I'm always going to try and have an, in, uh, an increase of volume for the body parts I want to grow, of course, but it doesn't equate having the most volume for them because the body parts that are already stronger will naturally be able to push more tonnage. 
So it's, it's tough to answer. Azer Yamin asks, are you Japanese? I'm not Japanese. I am not of Asian descent either, but a lot of people, uh, you know, seem to think that even when back in when I used to live in France, because there's a lot of Asian population where I lived, a lot of uh, people, especially Asian women, would ask me if I was Asian. Uh, if people thought I was Korean or Japanese, half Korean or half Japanese. Maybe it's because of the dark hair. I don't know, but I'm not. Uh, I don't have I don't have any Asian DNA in me. Ben Dover asks. I just realized your name because I said it out loud. It's stupid. Ever planning on making some sort of vlog? As I explained, nah. I, I might find myself making some food just to show you how to make good food that's cheap and easy to make. But the the holding the camera like this and going to Costco, I don't see the point in that. I have other content that I want to do that is much more interesting. Mark M. Do you have any plans to compete in bodybuilding show? I want to compete in an online bodybuilding show. The issue is that because of COVID, they're all being cancelled. So I can't compete in things that don't exist. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting and we'll see. I will compete whenever, if it's online. As far as real shows, I have a lot of issues with them. First off, I'm not about to I personally live in a very isolated place. I'm not about to travel just to win like some whey protein. Uh, if I'm going to show myself on stage in a thong hold up, I want to make money out of it. I, don't, I won't do it for the love of the sport, especially because I don't have much love for what bodybuilding is. I have love for physical development, but the industry of bodybuilding, I don't love. And also the standards for natural bodybuilding are stupid. Let me say it straight up. Asking men who are natural to go down to 8% so that they have like straighted glutes. What's the point? They, are, they end up looking like, like skeletons on stage. I don't think that's a good representation of what a powerful masculine physique should look like. So I don't know if I do one day do a bodybuilding show, I will of course uh, film it, but I will show up on stage at 50% body fat and I, I will dwarf everyone and not win because I won't be cut enough, but I just don't resonate with that type of that extreme dieting. Last question. Abanizer asks, what favorite anime and anime characters and why? Favorite anime and favorite manga is One Piece. Straight up, it's the best of all time. There is no discussion. There is no equivalent or rivals. Hunter x Hunter could have maybe entered the conversation if it was longer, but nothing touches it. And who's the favorite anime character? That's tough. I have a lot, but I would say Shin from HL21, just because we look alike and we have the same personality. It's insane. Uh, he's my favorite. Uh, I'm not as good as him in American football. That's the only issue, but yeah. We also have very similar stats. We used to have, now I'm much bigger than him, but yeah, that's my favorite guy. And if you don't know who he is, again, go watch, don't watch, sorry, forget that. Don't watch I Shall 21. Read it. The anime is awful. The manga is amazing. So that's going to be that. Thank you again for your questions. Uh, the next natural Q&A will be in a month. If you post a question underneath this q and I will try and answer it. But keep in mind that I always answer the questions that I got first, so it will be from the last, last Q&A first and then this one. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. So actually I lied because it's only been 18 minutes. So we still have time to answer some questions on this natural Q&A. Few more questions that I took from the first Q&A. Nicola Ricciardi asks, since you work with artificial intelligence, what is your opinion on AI coaches that give you calories, macros and gym programming? So if we're talking, I have some uh, knowledge about these. I've seen people use them. Understand that most of them are random, meaning it's, it's, a, it's a random generation of a workout that is not tailored towards you. And you can easily find that out because if you spam the generation, it will recommend something different. Um, as far as uh, more advanced programs that ask you to enter your stats and you know your, your goals, if you want to bulk, if you want to cut, at the end of the day, the program might give you something that's useful. I'm not going to say the opposite, but keep in mind that it's someone who programmed the intelligence to give you that. So you're basically taking advice from that person, but that person has found a way to sell 
their expertise to a world wide uh, po uh, wide population of people without having to coach them individually by plugging the information into a robot that is going to redistribute it based on certain parameters you're going to enter inside. So I would say if it's free, why not do it? But if it's you're paying, I'm already against coaches. So getting randomly fed a program by a robot, I'm all the more against it. And as far as calories, macros, it's even worse because they don't know how your body reacts to certain foods. And they're not going to be adaptive enough. That's also the issue with that type of things. They cannot predict. Um, I could talk about that for hours, but it's the big thing with AI is it, it has no ability of prediction past what it already knows. And it can teach itself certain things by basically putting things that it knows to, against each other to get to conclusions and the conclusions because a part, become a, becomes a part of the tree of knowledge and the tree can expand on itself but it can only expand within the realm of what it understands, if, if that makes sense. So I wouldn't really use these things. I would always advise people to learn how to do it themselves. Yuri asks, is there any fitness channel you don't follow? So long I saw your comments on everyone I follow. Well, I think everyone has understood why I do that. I do that for visibility. I basically do what YouTube is supposed to be doing, but it doesn't do because it doesn't care about small channels for very, uh, very understandable reasons. It's just marketing. They are not going to promote people who get 100 views because it's a waste of space on the front page. They want to promote people who get clicks. So at this point, if you have a small channel, your only way to build something and grow is to post comments. That's it. I recommend people don't actually ask for subs, just post jokes and hope people click on your page. That's what I do. And you have to understand one thing too. If I leave a comment, it doesn't mean that I watched the video, of course, because it would, it would be impossible. There's too many videos, right? So there's a lot of people that I comment on their page that I don't actually watch. Now, I'm not going to tell you their names because I don't want these people to be able to figure it out. And it's funnier to just have them guess, but there is some people that I actually watch where I will bookmark their videos and I will get back to them, but it's maybe 1% of the videos that I actually click on and comment on. G today, do you ever feel like being natural hinders your success with women dating? Men on forums say they feel more confident, get more ladies on the juice. Is it the only reason? And he says it's the only reason why he would take PEDs. So, as far as being more confident, PEDs make you more confident by default because they boost the hormones in your body. They replace them actually, and they promote the alpha mindset where you're more aggressive, you're more confident. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there's any change that makes you more confident. It's just the way you act that does, which also tells you that it can happen without the consumption of PEDs. It's just called being confident. And uh, so that's going to be completely achievable by most men. And usually the men that experience more success with women are men who were timid or awkward or were never able to put themselves out there. And they take PEDs and suddenly they're more aggressive, they're more outgoing and social, and they get more success. Well, duh, I mean, if you don't actually try, you're not going to get any results. So the second they start trying, they get results. Uh, personally, I never had any issues with that uh, when it comes to that. In it, if anything, I would say that uh, having too much frustration and aggressivity can be a bad thing because for the most part, women and men don't respond very well to that because it's needy and it, it wreaks desperation, as I said before. So be careful with that. Uh, for every single man that tells you that they have you know, a success story with PEDs and women, there are nine or 10 that had bad side effects, uh, bad things happen to them that will never share them. And also pay, be careful on forums. There's a lot of people who lie on forums. Nothing can be verified. Natural hypothermia asks, what combat sport styles do you find interesting? I like pretty much every sport. I, some sports I don't like because they're not physical enough, like soccer is just boring to me. But even some sports that, are, that have zero contact, like volleyball, I like. Uh, so I watch a lot of it. I usually watch the big competitions. I don't follow like the, the, the season 
there are certain sports that I used to watch that I don't watch because the sport has stopped being what I used to love, like football, American football, where I don't recognize it anymore, so I stopped watching it. Basketball as well. There are too many role changes that make the game boring to watch for me. As far as uh, combat sports and stars that I find interesting, for me the most interesting is uh, grappling on one side and striking on the other. I personally don't really like uh, striking sports that include too many kicks, like Muay Thai, Taekwondo, I just don't find them fun to watch. I really like boxing, straight up English boxing. Uh, I watch a lot of it. I like MMA too because I think it's a good mix of striking and grappling. But as far as pure grappling, my favorite sport is sumo wrestling. That's what I watch. I watch every single tournament. Uh, the pure grappling, th there's something beautiful in it. I like ju watching judo too. I used to practice it. Jiu-jitsu is interesting to watch too, even though I don't practice it. So it's mostly grappling that I care about. And it's also why I like Grappler Baki so much, even though he's not a pure grappler. And last question by We Shall Never Surrender. Ever plan on having a family and settling down someday? So it depends on what settling down means, right? Because in my opinion, I've already settled down. Uh, as far as having a family goes, if it means kids, yes, I do want kids. I don't have any at the moment. Uh, but if, you know, if the environment allows me to, I will have kids. And uh, that's that. I personally am quite sedentary as a person, so it should come to no surprise that I'm already settled down at 25. I'm personally very happy like this. I don't really get the big, you know, living up your 20s thing. But that's me. I'm pretty much a monk. So, you know, if you do enjoy your 20s, don't feel bad about it. Do your thing. Just protect yourself and don't damage your ability to have a great future with someone else with the stupid stuff you're doing now. So I'm going to leave you on that. I think that now we should have reached the 25 minute mark. So it's long enough for the Q&A. Any question you want, put them in the comment. Thank you. See you soon.